Good morning, my friends, and welcome to this episode of Happiness After Codependency. I'm Marshall Bircher, and I'm excited to have you here. In our episode today of Series 1 of The Anatomy of Codependency, today we're going to be exploring how codependency tries to create safety in our world and in our relationships, as that's one of the three necessities we have as human beings. So before we get started to that, I need to share this out with the community real quick. So I'm going to do that here right now. The community is your safe haven here on the internet where you can find tools, guidance, and support in your healing from codependency so you can come to know, love, and be who you are. So the link is above on Facebook, below on YouTube. And if you're listening via YouTube, hit that subscribe button. So I'm going to do that right now and... There we are. All right. <clears throat> also, stick around for an announcement on enrollment that is just opened up here because I'll, I'll, we'll talk about that at the end of the episode. So, again, welcome. I'm excited to have you here. So, codependency and the three necessities. So, codependency is a strategy for trying to meet your core needs. Um, it's a way of surviving unreliable, toxic, or or chaotic relationships, whether it's with a family member, with a parent, with a significant other, with peers, with culture, things of like that nature. When we don't feel like we have the power to be our, ourselves in a safe way, we don't have a, the power to advocate for ourselves or to leave a situation or a dynamic and feel safe and feel supported, we're going to start experiencing codependent reactions to it because our body is having a biological response called freezing and fawning to the situation and our codependent behaviors are a product of this fawning response. Fawning is about appealing to or becoming attractive to what we perceive as a threat. So if I feel like, hey, this person is threatening me, like it's my parent, they're threatening to me, but if I become a really good boy, I please them, I make them feel good, I do what they want, they won't be so mad, they won't be so angry, they won't try to make um, make things scary, they will be nicer, they will be kinder, they might even love me more, things of that nature are what I would try to accomplish in that regard. So that's basically how fawning shows up. We become people pleasers, we avoid conflict, we try to regulate their emotions for them. We try to prove our worth or try to earn love that way. And sometimes we try to control them regulate by regulating their emotions or trying to control outcomes, we try to become perfectionistic, things of that nature. <clears throat> so when, we're, when we grow up in that kind of dynamic, we do not learn how to feel safe because things are intrinsically unsafe. So what we do instead is we try to create safety three specific areas. So our fundamental need for safety has three specific categories. We need physical safety, emotional safety, and relational safety. Our physical safety is determined by our environment. Do we have a shelter? Do we have food? Do we have water? Are the people that we're around, are they safe? Is, there, is it reasonable for me to rest, to sleep, to, to be able to play and to be creative? Physical safety is our environment and the relationships and people in that environment. Emotional safety is about how f safe it feels to have emotions, to have needs, to have wants, to share and express them, as well as how other people express their emotions, needs, and wants in the ways they do that. Does that feel safe to us? Does it feel safe to have attachment and connection with others? Right, Emotional bonding with them. And then our third component is relational safety. This is how other people behave towards us, how we behave towards them, and it is an it involves the physical and emotional safeties. Um, so, with relational safety, can I be myself with them? Can they be that way with me? Is how we react and relate to each other safe for us, or do we feel threatened? Do we feel insecure? Do we feel confused by it? Is there gaslighting? Is there abuse? Is there neglect? Things of that nature. So codependency tries to accomplish these three safeties by regulating other people's emotions and taking responsibility for them. It tries to do this by becoming ideal or perfect 
for this person so that they'll behave in a specific way in response to our needs and wants and our presence in their life. It tries to do this by proving our worth by showing up the way we think they want us to show up. And it tries to accomplish these three safeties by becoming an ideal person for them. So codependency's approach to these three safeties is to void our sense of self. It's like, I can't be myself in these areas or I'm going to get hurt. But if I be something else that I think they want because of the, what they say and what they praise and what they pay attention to, maybe I should be those things. So if I do the things that they like, they're going to like me, they're going to love me, and I'm going to feel safer in this experience. That's the codependent approach. Unfortunately, because we're not being ourselves, because we're, we're not safe to be an individual to have boundaries, to have specific needs and wants, to have preferences and how those are treated, we become more and more unsafe in that dynamic because we're trying to appeal to a person, place, or thing that isn't safe. There's no way to create safety when the environment itself is not safe. And that environment includes the people involved in it, the cultures, the the physical environment, all of that. If those things are not intrinsically safe. We're not going to be safe. There's no way to create it out of that. Unsafety cannot beget safety. So real safety is created by being in relationship to our physical, emotional, and relational safeties uh, through relating with people, places, and things that feel and behave safely with us. So we feel safe with them, and we feel safe with these things because of how they respond to us, how they treat us. They treat our needs and our wants with respect, with acknowledgement, with warmth. They may say no to them, but they're not antagonistic. They don't call names. They don't put us down. They don't shame or guilt us. They care about and respect our emotions and our lived experience. They have curiosity and interest in what those things are because they have a care and they have an interest in our well-being and happiness. They respect our boundaries. They respect our limits. They respect our capacities because they don't feel entitled to anything from us. They see their connection with us as a privilege. We see our connection with them as a privilege. Things are built on consent. This creates safety emotionally, relationally, and physically for us because we're able to be ourselves in this environment. They're able to be themselves in this environment. And that allows us to see each other understand and comprehend each other and then connect with each other in ways that are healthy loving and kind this is how we create that first essential safety in our life this is the real work of codependent healing is transitioning from the codependent model of trying to maintain safety connection and identity into the self-advocating model of connection of safety connection and, and identity that's the real work we're doing here, and that's what I help you facilitate and accomplish in your life with these videos and with the Happiness After Codependency system that I teach. So my friends, we're looking at codependency. You're looking at self-advocacy and where you're at and your need for safety. Look to see if you're trying to please people, trying to emotionally regulate them, trying to be perfect for them, trying to prove yourself to them or avoid conflict. Those things are showing up for you you're in the codependent spectrum of trying to create safety out of something that doesn't feel safe. Now, if you're in the advocacy spectrum of saying yes to things and no to things honestly and clearly and directly, that you know what your wants and needs are, you know what the limits you have are, what your capacity signals are, and that you are advocating for yourself, asking for what you want and how you want it, with people that have shown and demonstrated respect and value for those things, you are in the self-advocacy work right there and creating real reliable sustainable safety in your world so that is what we need to be looking for in our work now about that announcement enrollment for the happiness after codependency system is open it opened today or opened yesterday and enrollment oh it's open through may 7th this is your chance to get into my system for helping you transition from codependent into that self-advocacy so you can create safety 
connection and identity in ways that resonate with you that actually produce those things in healthy ways that don't require you to give yourself up, but actually help you keep yourself. Uh, specifically in this enrollment, the self-trust course is going to start. So when you sign up for the happiness after codependency system, you get enrolled into the self-trust course because that's part of that system. And that's where I help you answer the question, how do I trust myself? I help you accomplish that uh, building self-trust in yourself through three specific focuses. I help you trust the innate legitimacy of your emotions, your reactions, your lived experiences, your capacities, and your person. Then we work on what's called natural completeness, where you learn how to trust your own innate value, the goodness and value of your limits, and your own personal completeness. And that leads us to congruence, where I teach you how to align your intentions and your, what you want with your choices and actions so that those create the outcomes you're seeking in your world. And that's what we accomplish in this first part of the happiness after codependency system um, with self-trust. So self-trust, the live classes start May 9th. They're taught twice on Mondays at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. You get lifetime access to the recordings and lifetime access to the live edition of that particular course. This is the last time I will be teaching that course as there's going to be some big updates coming in June and July with my coursework. So come join us. I've discounted everything 50% or more because of the financial pressures a lot of people are having thanks to inflation and all that. You can come get in now for 50%. I was like four ninety seven dollars for the self-trust course alone or you can get into the happiness after codependency system for nine ninety seven, which is typically two thousand dollars. So, come join us. The links are above are the links are above on Facebook, below on YouTube, and on my front page at happinessaftercodependency.com. Thank you guys for being here. Let me know if you have any comments or questions below. Let me know what you thought about today's training, especially around safety. And then I will see you in our next episode as we talk about connection and how codependency, codependency tries to con create connection and what the self-advocacy approach is to that. So I'll see you then. Have a great day. Bye-bye.